Today we are going to be reviewing how to solve a one-step equation. We did this a few weeks ago, but I just wanted to go over a few more examples to refresh your memories. Let's start with this first one here. Now in solving a one-step equation, or in solving an equation in general, our goal is to get the variable, in this case x, alone. We want to see what that equals. I always like to start off solving equations by drawing a line down the equal sign. This just reminds me that whatever I do over here, I have to come to this side and do the same thing. Math is fair, so whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Now, in solving equations, I always start by looking at the side with the variables. So I have here x plus 7. So we are adding 7 to our variable. When we solve, we have to do the inverse, or the opposite operation. So the opposite of adding 7 is subtracting 7. So I have to subtract 7 from both sides. Whatever I do to one side, I have to come over and do it to the other side as well. So the opposite of adding 7, subtracting 7. 7 minus 7 gives us 0, which is exactly what we want. That's why we do the opposite, because I want this to go away. So then when I bring this down, I only have the x left here on this side. We simplify this side, we get 13 minus 7, which 13 take away 7 leaves me with 6. So x equals 6 is my final answer, because I have the x alone on this side of the equation. Now if you remember, we can always check our work. So I can take this 6 and plug it back into my original equation to make sure I have the correct answer. So I'm going to take that 6 and instead of x plus 7, I'm going to replace that and put 6 plus 7. Now 6 plus 7 is 13. So since we got that 13, I know that x equals 6 is correct. So x equals 6 is my final answer. Let's look at the next example here. We have x minus 3 equals 14. So again, I'm going to start off by just drawing this line, just to remind myself that whatever I do on one side, I have to do on the other. I locate my variable x. And what's happening to the x? Well, I can see that I'm subtracting 3 from the x. So we have to do the inverse, or opposite, the inverse of subtracting 3, then, is adding 3. So since I'm adding 3 on this side, I have to go to the other side of my equals line and also add 3. Negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So again, because those are opposites or inverse, those cancel each other out, leaving me with just this x to bring down, which is exactly what I want. Now I have that x alone on that side. And we can simplify over here. 14 plus 3 gives me a total of 17. So x equals 17. Again, we can check this. Take this 17 and plug it back in for x. And I get 17 minus 3 equals, well, 17 minus 3 gives us 14. And since we got that 14, we know that x equals 17 is the correct answer. So I'm done. Now we do the same type of thing with these bottom two here when we have multiplication and division. We're still going to use the inverse operations to solve for the variable. So this next example, I have 7x equals 56. Now if we remember correctly, that 7x is really 7 times x. Remember when a number is right in front of a variable like this, when they're together with no operation in between them, it always represents multiplication. So again, I'm going to draw my line, and the opposite, or the inverse, of multiplying x by 7 then is to divide by 7. So we have to divide both sides by 7. 
Now remember that fraction bar represents division here. You can write the actual divide symbol, but I like to do the fraction bar. It keeps it a little neater, especially when you have more than one step. So now we can simplify. 7 divided by 7 is 1. So we get 1x here. But remember that 1 in front, we don't really have to write that. It can be just x. There's always an imaginary one there. We don't have to write it. So I get x alone, just like we wanted by doing the inverse operation here. Over here I have 56 divided by 7, which leaves me with 8. So x equals 8 is my final answer because I have x all alone over here. Just like before, we can plug that back in and double check. Take that 8 and plug it back in. So I would have 7 times 8. I like to use parentheses to represent that I'm multiplying 7 and 8. If I just plug 8 back in for x, it looks like 78. So make sure you use that parentheses so you know you're going 7 times 8. 7 times 8 then is 56. So since we get that 56, I know that x equals 8 is the correct answer. Last but not least, we have x divided by 2 equals 12. Remember that fraction bar again means divide. So draw my line reminding myself that whatever I do over here to get my variable alone I have to do the same thing over here. We have x divided by 2. Now the inverse or the opposite of dividing by 2 is to multiply by 2. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. Again using the parentheses to show multiplication um, you can use a dot if you want to to show multiplication, but I wouldn't use an x because x is our variable here. Now 2 divided by 2 again gives me 1. So those cancel each other out, and again I'm just left with the x, which is exactly what we want. By doing the inverse, we get just x left here that we drop down. On this side, 12 times 2. 12 times 2 is 24. So x equals 24 is my final answer. And we'll check it just to make sure. Plug that 24 back in for x. So instead of x divided by 2, I'm going to have 24 divided by 2 equals, well, 24 divided by 2 is 12. So again, since we get that 12, x equals 24 is correct. I hope this helps. Call me if you have any questions.